Welcome. Today is another Riftwing Designs for Zen. Today, surprise, cosplaying as Spike the Dragon. And I'm going to be doing a whole bunch of strap yoga with you guys today as the second of today's aid workshops. So if you haven't already, grab yourself a nice tie or a strap or any other long flexible object such as a towel or t-shirt. And let's get started. So today, again, we're going to be doing the second one, and it's going to be My Little Pony theme, so the playlist you've got in chat down here. And you can get that started. While we're doing that, why don't we get nice and comfortable? If you need water, bring water. And remember, last week's was the blanket workshop. So if you do need a cushion that you learned from last time, definitely get your blanket and have it handy. And if you haven't seen it yet, it is on YouTube, so definitely go and check it out. We're going to start off in our seat, seated position, and then we're going to actually do quite a bit standing today, a lot with shoulders and hips. So if you have any issues with your shoulders or your hips, as always, we're following Bob Ross style, which means no pain and everything that you do for yourself is right, you do not have to copy me. I am going to give you a lot of options. And in yoga, the most important thing is to find ease and comfort in whichever way that you like to do yoga. It's not about being like me, it's about being yourself. Speaking of being yourself, let's talk a little bit about my cosplay today. Today I am Spike the Dragon, which is a main character in My Little Pony. Specifically, very popular in My Little Pony friendship is Magic, and he is Twilight Sparkle, the main character's best friend and number one assistant. He helps to solve a lot of adventures and even was the savior of the Crystal Empire. But even as he was this amazing hero that saved an entire empire, he still had a lot of self-doubts. As the only dragon in a group of ponies, Spike often felt out of place. His friends poked fun at him for acting more like a pony than a dragon. And it made him question his identity and where he came from. He decided to investigate his origin and found himself in the Dragonlands. And after some hard-won teamwork, Spike realized that it's not what he is that's important. It's who he is that really matters. And that is being a dragon with a pony family and friends. So as we start today's yoga, think about how you would like to set today's intention. If you'd like to use a Spike the Dragon themed, you can set your intention to be yourself and to feel good about yourself. And if you'd like to set a separate intention, you can do so now. To start off, we'll, we're going to seal our intention by inhaling and raising our hands up, exhaling and drawing to heart center. Take a big inhale and exhale, and then seal it with an even deeper exhale. Ready? Inhale first, then let it go. And with that, let's start our strap yoga. So to begin with, we're going to stand up, find a comfortable position. This is going to be our mountain pose. So your hips and heels will be about the same distance apart. Shoulders roll back, head neutral, arms back. So the shoulders are actually back in the line and your palms should be facing out. Maybe you invite a little bend in your knees just to see how your weight is spread across your feet. And then find that neutral neck. Your eyes can be slightly closed. If you close them, there's more challenge with balance. From here, start to feel your breathing. Notice where it is. And then begin to deepen it through the diaphragm. If you'd like, you can do like I am and place your hands in your belly, or you can continue to focus on rolling those shoulders back and down as you breathe deeply. And we're gonna do some puffing exhales because we're dragons here. So on an inhale, let it go. And we're gonna go fast. So if you feel like you're gonna hyperventilate, definitely don't. Start to do it through your nose. So a short inhale. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, catch your breath. This really brings in a lot of energy to your body, but again, it can cause you to be dizzy, so be careful. And one more time, this time through your nose. Whew. Good job, guys. Now just come back to a normal breath. Feel how you're feeling here. To start off with, grab your strap or grab your tie. And you're going to take it and hold it in front of you at about a, a little wider than your neutral position. We're going to, and I'm just going to go on my knees so you see my whole body here. Inhale, arms up. Feel how that is here. And actually, I mean, if you want to do it on your knees, again, you can. Again, find that blanket if you need it. From here, exhale down. Find if you need your arms wider or closer together. And you can wrap your strap, whatever works for you. So we're going to exhale down. Inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale up. One more time. Exhale down. Inhale up. Straps are used as aids. So as you feel this here, maybe you start to do a little back bend. Just feeling how it fits. Now again, if you don't have this tie or a buckle, a belt, you can use a leaf, you can use a t-shirt, you can use a towel, anything to really keep that a little wider than your body here. From there, let's start to do side to side. So inhale up, exhale you keeping your arms stretched in that strap try to go to the side feel this side of your body open up and again adjust your grip as you need maybe you go longer here then inhale up exhale other side again adjusting and finding where you want to be your gaze can be down or it can be neutral breathing here then inhale up now you can go fast side to side, or you can go slow. I'm gonna go slow because I really like this deep stretch. Inhale up and exhale every time you go to the side. Feeling what you wanna stretch here. And inhale up, good. Now we're gonna do flossing. So where we're at here, if you're standing, this is gonna be a little bit better. And I'm going to do it again from down here so you see my whole body is adjusting your grip. Try and lower your arms behind you, keeping the shoulders apart. This does not work for everyone, and it can be tight. If you find a tight spot, just stay there and kind of wiggle. But if you have full rotation in your shoulders, you might be able to go all the way down. Do these as slow or as fast as you want. But again, this is flossing, which I actually taught you guys in staff yoga when we did the Owl House staff yoga, which again is on YouTube if you haven't seen it. So this is flossing using a strap. Really healthy for your joints if your joints can move this far. It helps to break up any excess gunk that's in your shoulders, that is a technical word. <laughs> and if it doesn't work for you, don't do it. Maybe you just do without a strap and just kind of rotate your arm around. Again, this is your practice. Do what works for you. And if you're with me here, we're gonna take our hands down. And we just did a whole bunch, so I'm actually gonna put my strap down here and we're just gonna do a couple shoulder rolls and maybe some neck rolls. Let go of any tension and if you feel something, just wiggle it out. I'm gonna see what happens if I turn the spotlight off. I don't want you to not see my face, but it is a little dark today. That works. Okay, so now that you've rolled your shoulders and your neck, we've done our shoulder opening. We're gonna do our back. So grab your strap again, and this time put it on the ground and stand on it so your feet are hips distance apart right in the middle of it. And we're gonna take this strap, lifting it up and holding onto it. So you're gonna go into your forward fold here, keeping your knees bent and use the strap to help pull you down. Let your neck go here. Rock it back and forth, yes and no, up and down. 
<sighs> invite that heavy bend in the knees and use your arms and shoulders to pull you back and down. Breathing here. And again, if you don't want to use the strap, you can just go into a nice loose hang. This is your practice. <laughs> Do what you want with it. But if you're with me, you're using that strap, maybe you try to straighten your knees a little, but never lock your knees in yoga. You don't want to lock them because that can cause damage. <sighs> From here, inhaling, holding it up to a halfway lift. So now your back is parallel. Your knees are still slightly bent, and instead of having your hands on your shins, use the strap and feel your shoulders go back and down. Your neck should be neutral, looking down a little bit in front of you. Breathe here. And again, maybe you need to have a deeper bend. That's fine. This is your practice. Find ease. And then exhale, fold. Inhale, come all the way up. I'm letting my strap go and just doing one big reach up. Oh, exhale, fold. Good job, guys. Now we're going to go into our floor practice. Again, if you need to have a blanket for cushion, you can put it underneath your knees. First thing we're going to show is how to do yoga, strap yoga with cat and cow. So there's a lot of different things that you can do with cat, cow, and a lot of other poses. I would say over half of yoga poses, you can add some kind of an adjustment or aid using a strap. So for this one, uh, we're going to be taking it around our arms. So you're gonna need to have a knot. If you have a belt, you've got this little doohickey here. I think that's the technical word, right? So you've got the open part and you can thread the strap through. There we go. So it's going through and then you make the loop. So if you can make a loop, that's great. If you have an actual yoga strap, it's even better because it has a little lock. If you've just got like a tie, you can do a slip knot. And I unfortunately can't really explain it well. So you take and you knot it around itself. So you've now got a slip knot. What we're gonna be doing with this is we're going to put it around your arms so you're kind of trapping yourself in you want it to be around here so it's about shoulder distance apart you should be able to get your arms down <laughs> you can also do it around your legs there's so many cool options you can do here so in cat cow when you do with strap around your arms maybe i'll do it with this one so you can see it better when you do it with a strap around your arms it prevents you from overextending your joints and so we're going to be doing quite a few with this loop so if you don't have a good belt or something that loops and locks, maybe go and find one right now. So see how this is? Going down into my normal tabletop position. From here, going into my cow, exhaling into cat, and it holds my arms steady. It's above the elbows. Inhaling and exhaling. So notice here, I'm really forced to push with my chest and move my shoulders. So it actually is an aid in assisting with giving you the proper pose. So you can continue to do cat cow here. Or I'll just show you with the legs. You slip them through the loop. You may need to adjust it a little bit wider. It can be a little awkward. You might fall a couple times, but again, just don't hurt yourself. So now it's above my thighs. I'm doing the same thing. And obviously you could do both if you really want to tie yourself into a knot. Again, this is an aid. If it feels good, use it. If it doesn't, that's it. We'll try something else, right? Ooh, here we go. I'm just going to get a drink. I can stay hydrated. So that's how you can use cat cow with straps. Now we're going to keep it if you haven't removed it from your forearms. Just stay where you are. So we've done our cat cows. We're gonna go into dolphin pose, which is actually a different type of down dog. It uses different muscles. So first thing you go onto your forearms, keeping that strap where it should be. I didn't say this was gonna be an easy yoga, unfortunately. So I've got my hands down 
arms are on, the forearms are on the ground. Now I'm going to tuck my toes under, and you're going to go into what's similar to a down dog. Now again, you have to adjust, and it's keeping those arms from spreading out, so the strap is holding you in as you push back. Now again, if this doesn't work, stay on your knees, and you're just going to lean forward. But if you're up with me, push those heels down, let your head go. And in dolphin, you really want to walk your feet forward. <laughs> this is as far as I can go, but you want to walk your feet forward and really make it vertical. Keep that neck loose. This is very difficult for me. Again, everybody has their own skills, so I'm going to step back just a little. <laughs> if in some things they do like dolphin push-ups, I'm not going to push you that far. <laughs> but uh, this is what dolphin with a strap looks like. And let's go down. And find a child's pose. So just lean back on your knees, widen your legs, and just put the strap down and relax. <sighs> Straps can be an aid in making it easier, and they can also make it more challenging. <sighs> All right, so let's go back into our arms. We're gonna try and do a flow now. So if you have done those sun salutations, we're gonna try and do it with our arms like this. It's not easy and it may not feel good. So again, be careful. So we're taking our hands here, we're in our cat cow. We're gonna push back into that dolphin or maybe you wanna try a dog, but feel how it pulls your shoulders. Maybe that doesn't work. For me, this feels good. So let's do dolphin forward into chaturanga. And you're like, how does that work? Well, if you make your strap a little wider, and I hope my strap is long enough, theoretically, when you're going down, this is as far as you should get. Chaturanga does not lower to the earth. Your arms are actually like this, pulling against your chest. So that's as far as you want to go. It's a really good aid to keep your shoulders from overextending. And then up dog, you're rolling forward, your legs do not touch the ground. So your hands are still by your chest. And then go back to your down dog or your dolphin. So let's do that again. Forward, in the plank, lower to chaturanga, up dog, and your down dog or your dolphin. <laughs> what do you think? Something? Again, it may not be what works for you. So that's how you can do part of your vinyasa flow using a strap for aid. But what else can we do? <laughs> to be honest, you could be doing this for a couple hours, but we're not gonna be here forever. So let's go into, let's go through the flow. We've got our dogs and our forward folds, and then you step forward into your lunges. So I'm just gonna put it to the side here as we get through. So you've gone from your down dog Stepping forward. Now we did at the beginning of class the forward fold, which you can use. I'm going to use this as my unlooped strap. <laughs> so you can use your unlooped strap for your forward fold. And your halfway lift, fold, all of that fun stuff, right? Raising up, lowering down. Then you step back into a low lunge. So if you lower your knee here, and again, maybe you need that blanket, we're going to do some fun things with the low lunge. So first off, get comfortable in your lunge. Feel how your hips are moving. Feel how your knees are. I'm actually going to use that blanket because you are going to put some pressure on your knees, and my knees, again, are pretty bony. So here we go. Oops. Make sure you guys can still hear me. It's kind of the most important part, right? There we go. All right, still good. So knees forward, other knees down. Hips should be parallel, facing forward. Back of your foot is on the ground. We're going to take the unlooped strap. This may be easier when you're from like a hero pose. You're going to put it around your ankle. So the idea is, or you could use the loop here, honestly. When you're here, 
then you can raise up and again look at i'm grabbing the wall raise up and have a bind with your foot in your low lunge if you have a lot of flexibility you can just grab your foot but if you don't have that flexibility you can try and raise your ankle with the strap and again if you use the loop tightening your loop there we go tightening your loop around the ankle you don't want to have it locked in there and again you have to be careful here just like that maybe both arms back really opens those shoulders shoulder blades down looking forward or even just down like this really good chest opener using your leg as an anchor this is great <laughs> and then plant your hand step your foot back i'm actually going to go onto my bum here put our legs forward and do a little windshield wipers Whew. how you guys feeling <sighs> just rocking those legs back and forth doing any motions you need to loosen up your hips because we already did our shoulders and now we're really working on these hip joints <laughs> you guys are making me work today all right here we go forward into our other lunge so we step back we're gonna go into our dog again, pushing back with the hips and heels. Breathe here, then inhale, lift your leg, step through, and come into low lunge on the other side. Lowering your back knee should be the opposite foot. First, get comfortable in your low lunge here. Make any movements you need. <sighs> Breathing. All right, then, Maybe you step that foot back, go into your hero or camel pose. Put strap around your other foot, other foot. Step that other foot back, the opposite foot forward. And now have fun on this side. Keeping your hips parallel facing forward. Finding your balance, maybe raising that back foot. Maybe coming into a bind. Again, no pain. Or maybe you keep that foot down and just use it as an anchor to open your chest here, rising through the hips, really pulling in here with your core. Breathe. I really feel a lot of opening here in my hips and groin. Shoulders. And let go of the strap, plant your hands, step back. And here you can go through an optional flow or you can meet me back in child's pose. Great work, guys. <sighs> Wherever you're at, feeling your hips here. And again, if you need to do those windshield wipers again, go right ahead. I actually feel like my body needs to do a little reverse stretch. So now that I've gotten neutral, I'm just going to lower my hips and do a little bit of a seal or maybe a sphinx. Finding a little mini back bend that allows my groin and hips to loosen up. Again, if you don't know all of these poses, I will be putting the video on YouTube. You can pause it and look into it, or you can always message me. I am available for consultations. So you can press up and back, all meeting back in your child's pose. And it is already halfway there. So we're not gonna go through our warriors. I think I might wanna do a warrior workshop at some point in the future where we go through warrior one, two, three, and how you could use the straps together. For now, I'm just gonna show you a couple of options with your arms that we haven't done. And then we're gonna go work on some floor work. First off, binds. So when you're in any of the poses that are opening your chest, whether it's a crescent lunge, a normal lunge, your warrior one, all of those with your hands up, gait, goddess. There's a lot of poses where your arms are up. You can use a strap and hold it up. You can use it to hold yourself into soccer arms. Or you can take it in one hand. Well, I'll use the black one so you can see it better. You take your one strap, take it in one arm, lift it above your head, grab it with the opposite arm. So look at, you've got your bind. This is an assisted bind. 
and you can try and pull that arm down again no pain shoulder blades back and down finding a stretch so now I'm just gonna show you you don't have to do this you can be in your crescent lunge with a bind your warrior one with a bind your goddess with a bind and because we did it this way now let go with the upper arm the strap is in your other hand put that hand up and try and find a bind this way notice the difference in your stretch here maybe this arm doesn't go back as far maybe it's more flexible maybe your hands can come closer together or maybe they don't find your balance as you do your stretch on the other side pretty cool these can also be done in a lot of seated poses that we're going to be going into next so if you ever want to have more of that shoulder stretch you can do that and again remember you also have the option to grab it behind you into the superman arm so if you do something like a warrior three you can use that to hold your arm stable as you're flying i'm just going to do the other side here i to warm myself up I'll be doing some surprise warrior threes watch my instagram to see what happens with those so the world is your oyster when it comes to using straps we're now halfway through this exercise and i can tell you i am sweating <laughs> So again, remember to stay hydrated. And now we're going to go onto the ground. So again, if you need that cushion, the blanket, go right ahead. I'll see if I need it in a little bit. <laughs> we're going to start with our bow. So as we come on from our hands, um, bow, I'll show you first. So you come down and you grab your feet and you lift. But you can put it around your feet again doing that that loop and hook in order to hold your legs together as an assist and again this length is going to differ there we go <laughs> so first thing you do is you put your legs through i'm going to keep it around my ankles you can also do it around your thighs lower yourself down maybe we rest here put your arms in front of your head we'll do a little crocodile so notice it's holding my feet together and as i rest my head on my hands for crocodile i feel a little bit of pull from my legs as they try to splay open but the strap holds them in place breathing here all right now we're going to move into our Bow, on, our bow. So to start, you put your hands behind you and you lift your legs. And this is where if you have the strap and you have a string on the strap, you can grab the string. Um, so we'll do this one first. This is with my legs together. So I grab my ankles and I just lift with the torso. And you don't have to go high. The idea is just to pull your shoulder blades back and grab. So the other thing I'm going to do is oof, <laughs> I'm going to make the strap have a string. Uh, so my ankles are closer together here. It's really high on my ankles. So when I go back, I can grab the string and just pull. So now I'm not even lifting my back legs. I'm just using my back ankles to lift my chest here. Again, if it doesn't work for you, don't do it, but just play around. See where you want to have a strap to help with your bow. Or maybe you don't want it at all. <laughs> That's fine. Okay, and then lower down. <sighs> okay, let's do a little baby cobra. So your feet are down. Lifting with the chest and just barely lift your hands off the ground. Exhale down. One more time, lift up. And then plant your hands, push up and back into, now your legs are stuck together, right? So we're doing a closed leg child's pose. You can even use a strap in child's pose. Pretty cool, huh? And if you don't like it, take it right off. <laughs> All right, so next we're gonna do boat. So again, flip over. Boat, I'm going to demonstrate without the strap first, is where you're sitting on 
your, your sit bones here, you lift up and then you try and float. So a full one can be extended like this. It can be a low boat, it can be a high boat, but notice how the legs stay together when you're in boat. So guess what? You can use the strap. You can keep your ankles together, you can keep it wide apart, or put it on the thighs. Using your abs and core here, shoulders back and down. And again, you can straighten your legs, you can pull your feet in, or maybe you have to keep your hands down, that's fine too. Find your boat, play around with it for a little bit. Or, if you don't like it on your legs, you can use the non-looped strap with your hands. Look at this. Now I'm really working my arms. You can hear my voice as my abs are shaking. Whew. Challenging, keeping those shoulder blades down and your hands apart. Whew. Yeah, this is not an easy one for sure. Okay, so that's boat. Now we're gonna go into staff. So when we're in seated poses, this is staff, hips are down, back is straight, feet are flexed, pulling forward, knees are also pulling back, shoulders back and down, plant your hands and breathe. I like to have my fingers pointing forward, but you can have them pointing back or to the sides, whatever works for you. <sighs> staff is an active sitting pose. So you can use your non-loop strap, put it around your feet, Keeping that back completely straight, neck neutral. This gives you a different stretch. Pull those abs in, shoulders back and down. Staff pose assisted by a strap. Breathe. Good. And now, guess what? easy, quote unquote, to go into a forward fold so you can adjust your, your hands, scooch them up, and maybe find a flat back forward fold. Flat backs forward folds are more of a deep stretch. Shoulders back and down again. So notice how far my forward fold is. I went like a little bit, but guess what? That's perfect for me. So it's perfect for my yoga. If you can fold all the way with a flat back, props. And if you can't and you're like me, this is good. Again, it's just stretching. Do what works for you. And now invite a bend, pulling on those straps to give you a different stretch. I actually feel it in my neck, so I'm gonna do a couple of neck rotations side to side before I relax my neck, bend my back and just deepen that fold. Maybe inhale, you let go a little bit and exhale, fold deeper. Doing what works for you. So as you can see, most <laughs> leg stretches you can use the strap for. So from here, let's do a couple more. I think we've got time for a few more. First, we're going to do Marichi's pose. So for Marichi, which is the name of a yogi sage, you draw one leg up and pull the heel back, and that's it. This is Marichi's pose. You can grab your leg, sit forward, you can do a twist, but this leg does not cross over. So you can again have your hand holding onto the straps. Now it can be outside of your knee, inside of your knee. It can be one hand. So you're hooking your foot. Use this one. Or you can use a loop here, honestly. Hooking your foot, planting your hand, hips facing forward, shoulders back and down, breathing in to Marichi A. Or invite that twist. Again, what works for you. And then we're going to switch sides. So lowering down, going through staff for a second, and then pulling your other foot in, finding your normal Marichi, and then figure out what you want to do with your strap or not. You don't have to. Again, this is your practice. And again, option to twist. And 
and let it go through your staff one more time you can do here like half lord of the fishes where you actually cross over same thing right so now you can be grabbing from the side i guess we can do that for a second we really worked a lot of our legs here see how it works so now i've got my arm on the twisted leg and it's just giving you a little assist it's really fun a lot of cool options here other side Lifting your knee, but this time crossing your foot over, putting down your strap, and then twisting the other way. Again, there are lots of options with a loop or without. None of them you have to do. Just see if it works. And I hope that you're enjoying this. All right, so now we're going to go down onto our backs to start cooling down. You've done a great job so far. Again, grab some water if you need. First thing I'm going to do is knees to chest, so you're going to want to have a large, whoops, large loop. So for knees to chest, you can put it around your ankles or around your thighs, or because we're going to bend our knees, so notice I'm sitting with my knees together bent and I'm just pulling them in really tight, I can put the loop around the top and the bottom of my bent knees. So now they're locked into place. So then when I lower myself down, whoop, there we go. Now my knees are locked in and maybe I pull it down a little more because you want your hips close to your hips anyways when you're doing all of these poses. So there you go. Again, feel free to fiddle with it. It doesn't have to be perfect. Pull all those knees. Feel the strap pressing back. Just hug it in. So first we're going to roll side to side. Notice that bind. And again, if it doesn't work for you, don't do it. You can't even let your hands go and do circles with the bound knees. Really opens up your hips here. It's really fun, actually. I enjoyed this a lot. And then the other way. And again, just hold it in if you don't want to do this. If it doesn't feel good, don't do it. Oh, yeah. Oh, I could do this for another five minutes, guys. <laughs> All right, come back to center and pull those knees in. Good job. <sighs> couple of small breaths yeah. let it go and then plant your hands either down or to a T what you're going to be doing here is using your abs if it feels good to lower your knees to one side so we're doing a bound bent knee twist and you can be looking straight up or you can look to the side and again only do what's comfortable for you we're going to do another one without the bind on both legs. So again, find what you need. Then inhale, really use your abs to lift, 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 lift. And if you have to use your arms, go ahead. But it's really good ab workout here. And then lower the other way. And I'm just adjusting because I have the wall here. Feel that twist. Breathing here. And again, use your core to pull it up. Hug it in. And now take the strap off. Nice work. Let's do a bridge here to unwind a little bit. So planting your hands. If you want, you can take your feet and put them through again. But just around your legs. <clears throat> Tighten it up a little bit. And then lift into your bridge. So it's holding your legs from splaying open again. And again, your bridge can be small or it can be big. You're planting your hands, pressing with your palms, your shoulders and your feet. Lifting, breathing. Your bridge can be as high or as low as you need. Really focus on keeping those thighs together. And then exhale, let it down. If you had the strap around your thighs, let it go. And now we're going to do our leg stretches. So we're going to make a smaller loop, smaller loop, and put it around your foot like a stirrup. And I'm going to tighten it a little bit for me. You can also have it around your ankle. So what we're going to do is extend one leg and put that strap around. I'm sure a lot of strap is around your foot. And you just hold it here to stretch. Now, 
because our extended leg, I'll scooch back a little bit here. Oh. <laughs> We've got our extended leg. Your knee can be bent. You don't want pain. Put your shoulders back and down, so you're going to have to have a longer strap. You can hold it up or down. Finding your stretch. Don't push too far. If you find your edge, which is where it starts to get tough, maybe just step back a little bit. Stepping back from the edge is one of the biggest challenges in yoga. All right, from here, grab the strap, press it, and you're going to exhale and lower it, keeping that strap tight. So you're doing a side twist here with the strap. Now you have the option to bend your knee if you need to have a knee, knee bent. You can loosen the strap or you can let it go longer. Maybe it needs to go forward more. Find what works for you, adjusting your grip, keeping those shoulder blades down so your twist is in the lower back. Breathe. And now here comes the fun part. We're going to switch sides. So you're still holding on, but lifting up, grab with both hands, and then, and I'm scooching so you can see it here, lowering to the other open side. So now you're really opening up across your hips. And if this doesn't work for you, again, find another option. Maybe you bend your knee, or maybe you just tuck that knee in and give yourself a hug. And if you're with me, lifting and raising it up to the center. And then I'm going to pull my knee in, take off the loop, let it down. Maybe you got to flop around here. Oof. Big, big, big hip stretches. Now hug the other knee in, connect your stirrup, stretching this way. Again, finding a bend in your knee and where your stretch needs to be, keeping your shoulders back and down. Or five. And then again, switch to the opposite hand of the foot that's up and allow it to lower. And again, I'm just scooching so that I can get through and you can see it. So it's crossing over to the other side. Again, you can look neutral or look the opposite direction. Find if you need to bend your knee, if you need to adjust your grip. Find how you can have the strap aid you in this pose. And then inhale and raise it up, switching hands, and then exhale, allow it to open however much you can on the other side. Again, adjusting your grip if you need to. Oof, my hip just popped. No pain, though. Seeing where you want to be on this side. And then draw it back, keeping your legs straight. And then pull the knee in. And let both down. And again, shake it out. Let's see where we're at. All right. Perfect timing, guys. So now we're going to try some happy baby options. You can use the hook or not the hook. Uh, this, some people feel exposed to doing happy baby. If you do, again, you don't have to, but the good news is I can't see you. You're just looking at me. So what happy baby normally is without the strap is you're hugging your knees in, then you grab your feet and you open up. So the exposed is you're literally opening up in between your legs, right? This is what it looks like. <laughs> um, so it's playful and fun if you're comfortable with it. So there's lots of things that you can do to make your happy baby have fun. You can put it across your feet. So let's start with a long. And you're going to hook both of your feet in the center and lower down, keeping your knees in. Actually, it's, it's probably easier to do like this. Again, lots of options. So then you straighten it. You can do both legs, but widen your feet, bend your knees, and you can pull it into that happy baby feel. But you don't have to have the flexibility of grabbing your ankles. So you're pushing with your feet. Your knees are very bent. Back with your hips and shoulders. Lock your hips here. See how wide my feet are? <laughs> and 
But then you have the option with the stirrup to do a one-legged happy baby. So you're in and you or maybe you bend your knee. It's really just pulling in and opening that hip. So now we're just moving our hips around, right? That's fine. One-legged happy baby. Let's do the other side. Oops, my stirrup got really tight. I have one leg extended, the other knee, and I'm just kind of playing with the hip here, doing a modified happy baby. Still perfectly fine. Actually, it feels fantastic. <laughs> and again, if you circle one way, make sure you circle the other way. Okay. And if you have two straps, obviously, you can make a double stirrup happy baby. Why not? Why not, guys? Let's do a double stirrup happy baby. Again, the world is your oyster here. Check that out. Double stirrup. Okay? So just, you know, whatever works for you, you can find all kinds of neat yoga poses using your straps to help you out. So with that, we have done all of our main poses. Grab a drink of water and we're going to get it ready for a savasana. So again, as I mentioned in blanket yoga, if you'd like for savasana, you can use it underneath you, under your head, and under your knees. There's a lot of options, which again, if you haven't seen, please check out the video on YouTube. What I'm going to be doing is just the normal version. You can also cover yourself with it. There are so many options. We spent probably five minutes talking about Savasana blanket options. So for Savasana, I'm going to be doing a wide loop just above the knees. I'm going to make it as wide as I can. So my knees are like this. Okay. As you lower down into your final relaxation pose, it's keeping my legs from splaying out too much. So when I lower down, I can have my ankles open up, but my legs are just being held in a little bit. This may or may not feel good to you. I'll give it a try. And if it works, great. If it doesn't, just do a normal relaxation. So for Savasana, our final resting pose, you're allowing your ankles to relax. Letting your legs loosen up, maybe making adjustments with your hips, rolling those shoulders back and down, hands down, arms in front of you. Now you can either have your palms facing up to receive energy or down if you want grounding. Notice how your shoulder blades shift if you go from one to the other. Then also allow your neck to release, maybe rock it side to side here. And if you'd like, maybe rub your hands together really quick. And then place them gently on your closed eyes, just pressing your eyeballs back into your head. I know it sounds weird, but I love doing this. So you're not even pushing, you're just using the weight of your hands on your eyes. An option in Savasana is always if you have a weighted eye pillow to place that eye pillow on your eyes. You can even use a washcloth, a cool washcloth. It feels great on your forehead or on your eyes. And you can keep your hands there or you can come back into your final rest. So here, take a deep, deep breath in. Let it all go. And as you begin to relax, just notice how your body feels after all those big stretches you did in your shoulders and hips. Allow yourself to sink into relaxation. And if you have stray thoughts, just acknowledge them and let them go. They'll still be there when you come back in a few minutes. I'm going to let you relax on your own and I'll call you out in a few minutes.
slowly, gently begin to come back. Maybe take a deep breath in and let it go. Start to move your fingers and toes. Maybe rolling your ankles and wrists. Maybe raise your hands up and make a big body stretch. If you're just waking up. And as you're comfortable, roll to one side. And you'll remain there for a few breaths. In the My Little Pony Friendship is Magic episode, Equestria Games, Spike said, you know, it's kind of weird. No matter how many times others tell you you're great, all the praise in the world means nothing if you don't feel it inside. Sometimes, to feel good about yourself, you got to let go of the past. That way, when the time comes to let your greatness fly, you'll be able to light up the whole sky. Be yourself and know that you're worth it. With that, roll over and find yourself back to a seated position. You can keep your eyes closed or invite a gentle gaze. Roll those shoulders back and down. On an inhale, raise your hands above your head. Exhale, lower them to your sides. One more time, inhale up. Exhale, drawing palms together, bring them down to your chest and come back to your own personal intention. Decide whether you'd like to keep it for the rest of your day or whether you'd like to set a new one now. And as you move on to the rest of your day, carry that intention with you. We'll seal that with one small breath and then a big inhale and let it go. Then raise your hands up, placing your thumb knuckles on your forehead, the side of your intuition and knowledge and the light and love in me honors the light and love in all of you. Thank you for practicing with me today. Namaste. Thank you so much for being here, everybody. And again, this is workshop number two, Strap Yoga. There are quite a few more coming up again every Saturday at noon. And I look forward to seeing you for the next one. Wonder what my costume will be next week. You'll have to tune in to find out. All right, guys, take care.